Good afternoon, good people, pages and pens. I'm crying my eyes out, and I'm gonna tell you why right after this intro. It is officially my start of the last vlog of contemporary -a -thon, and I actually didn't read a single page of anything yesterday, and I've just not been in a fantastic headspace. And that sometimes happens to me when I feel really busy and I feel really stressed. You're gonna have to deal with the fact that I'm not always happy. So I picked up This Adventure Ends by Emma Mills and I decided that I was going to finish this book and I did. And I loved it so much. A part of this is me crying because I really, really love this book. But another part of me is just crying because it's just the way that I am right now. This is absolutely a five star read. The majority of the end of this book is just covered in my tears. Again, because of the mood that I'm in, um, but also just because I really, really, really loved this book and I didn't think I was going to because I read Foolish Hearts by her earlier this month before Contemporary Thon started and I gave it two stars. I didn't like it. I wasn't a fan and I was really worried that I wasn't going to like this one either. I love everything about it. It's about like one of those found families and chosen families and friends and it's about a girl who moves to a town and uh, the friend group that she falls into is already kind of established and she finds her place in it. Sloan kind of comes into this group of friends and the first thing that she does is kind of uh, come to bat for this boy Gabe and they're at a party or she like finally goes out her parents kind of like tell her she has to get out of the house and she goes to this party at school and uh this kid's kind of getting bullied and she goes up and stands up for him and defends him and this girl comes over and was like I can't believe that you just went to bat for Gabe and the girl that comes up to her is his twin sister the long and short of it is that Gabe's kind of their rock Gabe in this friend group is kind of the guy that everybody goes to and everybody leans on and uh so the fact that Sloane goes to bat for him when he's always going to bat for other people is really pivotal in this friend group and it really endears her to their friend group the twins mother has passed away and she was an artist like a local artist but she's gotten some fame after her passing uh one of her paintings goes missing and she kind of makes it her mission to track down this painting for the twins and get it back for them because it was one of her mom's last works and it's really important to them there's a whole bunch of other subplots and stuff kind of going on but it is so cute and so sweet and there's Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and the Outsiders and all these like references to books her father's actually a novelist and uh is writing and he he's kind of in a slump and he doesn't know what to write right now and he's having a really hard time so he falls into fan fiction he finds fan fiction and uses it as a writing exercise and goes like hard on this show and fan fiction for this show and starts writing fan fiction for the show and so there's like this big discussion about fan fiction and it was so adorable it was really 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 cute the family dynamic in this is fantastic the friend group dynamic in it is great oh god it just ripped my heart out and then put it back together and it's so diverse and really really sweet and I just I loved it so much like, I loved it so, so much. It might just be the mood that I'm in right now, but I feel like this could be my hating game for Chelsea. Like, this could be what I decide I want all of you to read. This could be it. This could be the one contemporary that I say, this is a contemporary you need to pick up and read. And I think that it would be well spent money because this is also just a gorgeous book. You guys have seen the naked cover and the actual cover is just as pretty. In terms of contemporary thought, let's do a quick wrap up. Physically read five books. Audibly listen to an audiobook of her body and other parties. I have read six books and it is Friday. So I'm ahead of my book count. Um, if I want to read seven books in seven days, I only need to read one more book and I have the rest of today, Saturday, and Sunday. I have to finish Starry Eyes, which is an ebook, and I just don't feel like reading on my e-reader, but I might have to um, because that is an arc for NetGalley and I need to get my review up for it. In terms of the challenges, my most recently acquired could be any of these because I got all of these in the same order. Simon, Amina's Voice, Love Star Girl. Four pink on the cover. I did go with Love Star Girl because Love in pink. I know it's lame. It's the only book I have with pink on the cover because I don't think I'm going to finish Tampa. For my dark and taboo contemporary, I'm going to
to switch over and I'm going to use her body in other parties because that was jar. For my graphic novel, I am going with Honor Girl. For my hyped book, I am going with Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda. For my diverse read, I am going with Amina's Voice, a book that was recommended to you. Literally all of these, like this was recommended to me. Simon's vs. Homo Sapiens Agendas was uh, recommended to me. The Ark is not technically recommended to me. I'm going to double down on the recommended to me book. I think I'm going to finish Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett and I'm going to throw in Anya's Ghost. This one is by Vera Broskel. I was questioning this one because it does have a ghost in it, whether or not this one would technically count. Um, but since I'm ahead and I don't have to worry too much, I'm going to throw this one in because... I don't really have to worry about how technically contemporary it is with this many books already read. So I think I'm going to read this for a little bit and then when I'm finished that I'm going to move on to Starry Eyes on my Nook. So I'm going to go and I will catch up with you when I have more reading to update you on. I know this should be a vlog. However, I finished another book. I did finish Anya's Ghost by Vera Bruskel. So this was a really quick graphic novel. Not a middle grade, which I don't know why I thought it was. I think because the like picture on the front looks so young. But this is set in high school. And a couple of issues with this particular book. One, it's like one of the few graphic novels that feature characters that still smoke, which is weird to me that anybody would ever still have that now just because it's so gross. But I guess realistic, but just set me kind of weird. Also, it starts off with a character saying that she won't eat the food her mom makes because she used to be 300 pounds and disgusting and um, she doesn't want to be that way anymore and then picking up celery, leaving the house only eating celery, which is not healthy. There's imagery throughout the book where you would insinuate that she has body dysmorphia, that she doesn't see herself the way that other people do. I'm not saying that that's not important to see in a book, but I don't think that it was done well. Like it wasn't really talked about, it wasn't really handled, it was just kind of there but not talked about. So not ever addressing it I don't think was very healthy. There's also a ton of slut shaming in this book, both towards men and women. Women. Now, while in one situation the guy was a complete skis ball, um, I just didn't really like it. Anya's friend in this, uh, Siobhan, a girl walks by and like says something to Anya and she's just like, oh, like I, he I heard that you were in the boys bathroom during lunch break. How'd that go, you whore? And I'm like, ew, like, I ew. It was weird. There was like a weird twist. It was fine, but I felt like there was topics in this that just weren't handled well that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So I'd say like a three star read. I didn't love it. Again, this doesn't really count for any of the challenges. It was just another book to read. This is the seventh book that I read for this week. <laughs> I apologize that you get me like doing my makeup while you get Chelsea doing things like Chinese New Year and actually having friends. Not that I don't have friends. My friends are all married with like children. I'm very blessed and I have amazing friends, but my best friends from high school, from college, all um, don't really live close to me anymore. They got married and moved away. I'm, I'm old, so they're all married and gone. I also just am so not compelled to like ever leave my house if I don't have to. Have purple hands, what the fuck, hair? I blame that on the fact that at some point last night, and I don't know when, we lost power. Cause I woke up in the middle of the night and the fan was off and I cannot sleep without a fan on. Without the fan, I became a sweaty mess and apparently the bed turned purple. Like I, I don't know. I'm just doing makeup so that I look alive today. Quick update, I did read more of Starry Eyes last night. I got to 77%. It is like a 400 plus page book. It is about a girl, oh shit, what's her name? I'm so bad with like main character's name. She is kind of an introvert. She's super into astrology. She goes to the astrology club and she goes glamping with some friends and her old boyfriend 
who she still has like subversive feelings for. Shit goes down and they end up backpacking through the woods to try to get to some astrology convention together. Just her and this old crush. It's really cute. Um, there's also family drama and dynamics. There's mental health uh, discussed. There is a lot of sex positive. It's diverse. The uh, love interest has two mothers. He knew his uh, birth father. A really cute book. It's nothing crazy stupid special, but it's very, very cute. I'm enjoying it. We're gonna see how it ends. I feel like I kind of see how it's coming together. There's some struggles in her family that I feel like are gonna come to the forefront at the end of the book. That'll probably be my last read of Contemporary-a-thon that I finish, and then I'll see if I can start anything else. This vlog will continue as soon as I have some more readings to update you on. That's it for now. I am done. Book number eight. I finished Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. I will put up a cover in this area. Um, it was really cute. I gave it four stars. I really did like it. It wrapped up nicely. It handled things well. There was some like issues within the friend group that happened on the camping trip that didn't really wrap up at the end in a way that I felt like was reasonable to me. Some of the family drama it resolved itself the way I felt like it needed to, but there was just still some like discussions and internal dialogue that I felt like didn't take place that probably should have. So that was what One Star came off for, but it was a really cute contemporary. It did have diversity. The main love interest has two mothers who run a sex shop. The um, main character had a mother who passed away when she was really young and her stepmother, who she just calls mom, is Korean American. So there is some diversity within the book. So there is some Korean culture also kind of thrown in there. Also super sex positive and sex forward. There's teenagers that have sex because that's a thing that happens. So that was kind of cool to see. Um, safe sex practices, really, really female focused. Like the guy was really interested in making sure it was good for her and being really open to like making sure it was good for her and communicating. And it was pretty awesome, actually. So really good. It was a long one at like 400 some pages for a contemporary, but I had a little bit of a head start for this. So that was really awesome. So that's book number eight, which I don't think it actually went for a challenge. I have no idea at this point what is going for what challenge. I just know that they're all done. So that's a win. I'm honestly not too sure that too much reading is going to happen tomorrow. So this may be just where I end the vlog. If so, it's been a fantastic, fantastic readathon, but I have a feeling I'll at least check in tomorrow a little bit, and knowing that I'm going to be up late and probably hungover, I probably no more reading in terms of finishing anything. I'll probably start another contemporary book, but nothing's going to get finished. So that makes my official TBR and total for the readathon eight books, which is fantastic. Two of them were graphic novels, and six of them were full-length novels. One of them was an audiobook. I will put the page count uh, total down here in editing. A fantastic week of reading. I had a ton of fun. I've been loving watching the contemporary thon vlogs. I've been loving keeping up with you guys on Instagram and on Twitter and loving all the tags. So I'm really excited for The Drunk Show, uh, which is coming up in just a little under two hours. And that has been my official reading for the readathon. We'll see what I start tomorrow and if I vlog anything else. It was a fantastic time and I loved being able to be in group chats with Chelsea and Natasha this week and talk to them a little bit more about reading as well. So I know that tonight will be a fantastic time. I'm very excited about it. And yeah, just another really, really fun one. And we'll have a date for you guys soon on the next round of this. We're really excited about it. We're going to try to give you guys as much possible prep time for the next round as we can. We'll try to plan that as soon as possible for you. Hello, friends. It is Sunday, the official last day of the contemporary -thon. I'm watching the Flyers game, waiting for my grandmother to get home. Um, and I just have a very busy family day. So... Because I've already finished eight books, I'm going to go ahead and call it for the readathon. It was very successful for me. You guys know I already did my whole wrap up of all the books and all the challenges in the last little section, so I'm not going to do it again right now. The drunk show last night was hilarious and phenomenal and a ton of fun, and I feel like garbage today. I think I went to bed around four, according to Drunk Julie on Instagram, and I got up around noon because that was the first time I felt like I could wake up and move without being just obviously still drunk. So, there's that. I am going to still move on and uh, read and annotate We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, which is 
a book that I actually really, really love. I read it a long time ago before BookTube, and it's a very polarizing book. People either love it or hate it. I love it. I didn't see the twist coming, and I happened to really, really love it because it's character-driven, and I just love character-driven stories. So I am going to reread and annotate that, but I'm not going to finish anything today. So this is going to be the end of contemporary -thon vlogging for me, and like I said before, Thank you so much to everybody who participated, who engaged, who was there at the drunk show. You guys, I think that was probably one of the busiest chat rooms I've ever seen. It was so much to keep up with, but it was amazing. And uh, Natasha and Chelsea are fantastic. We had so much fun. Huge success. Way more engagement than the first round, which was so much fun to see. And we will be doing another one probably uh, late August, early September. Kind of de depends on when book Tubathon is and how everything falls. So we will keep you updated. Be sure you're following Chelsea, and Natasha, and myself, our Twitter account for contemporary -thon and The Drunk Show. Um, follow us all the places. Uh, we will see you in another live show on Wednesday night, Chelsea's channel for the book club for American Queen by Sarah Simone. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be a good show. If you like this video, if you like this vlog series, if you like this readathon, do be sure to give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye guys. <laughs>